ladies and gentlemen, the news coming from South Africa in these days is not good. The TV images of slaughtered, protesting mine workers are still fresh in our minds. While Marikane is not another sharp field, however much some people may wish to force that particular metaphor, there is still enough reason for us all to worry. I have learned in my uh, brief and patchy academic life, but also from my experience of strolling through life as an African, to only be surprised by things and events that are not known. I know it is no comfort to those who lost their next of kin at Marikani and to all victims of grave injustice in post-apartheid South Africa to say, as I'm about to say, that those frightful events are sadly within what we should expect to happen in our country uh, with the kind of history that shaped South Africa. Again, this does not justify colors and insensitive politics, but it should help us to put some things into the right perspective. I have learned to be surprised by the unexpected and so to seek to identify in my work what makes events unexpected. In the wake of those sad events in South Africa, many voices were raised and heard that preached hatred and spoke the language of revenge, resistance, violence, and fighting back. That again is normal. What is not normal is that amidst such cries for revenge and for violence, a voice could chant its way to the young people of South Africa and say, and I'm quoting here an article that we put on our website, and I hope you have read it. I quote, South Africa is at a critical juncture, so let's talk. That to me is not normal, and such a voice deserves our utmost attention. Now, from Dr. Schleitman, the dear guests, believe it or not, the honor of that voice is here with us tonight. <laughs> Dr. Mantela Rampeli, leader of the Citizens' Movement for Social Change, the first South uh, the first black South African woman to become vice chancellor of a South African university, University of Cape Town, a former managing director of the World Bank, board member of many private and public institutions that I will not list here, though I should mention in particular the Nelson Mandela's Children's Fund and the Moore Ibrahim Foundation. <coughs> Dr. Rampele, I was seeing, will deliver in just a minute this year's Carl Schlettmann lecture. <laughs> Dr. Rampele, I dare say, is one of those unsung heroes of the civilization of South Africa. A woman in whose life and work, a personal biography, and the struggle of a people for justice blend and become one. I think we are privileged, indeed, that Dr. Rampele has found the time to come all the way from South Africa to share her wisdom, experience, and above all, composure. Remember, she said, let's talk, not let's fight with us. I suspect that her wisdom comes from her extraordinary accomplishment of becoming a medical doctor in apartheid South Africa as early as 1972 from the <coughs> University of Montana of obtaining a PhD in social anthropology from the University of Cape Town and many other academic degrees in the fields of health and business, <coughs> but also from her engagement in the anti-apartheid struggle, for example, as a founding member, along with Steve Pico, of the Black Consciousness Movement, and her long experience as a South African who has been at the forefront <coughs> of the struggle for social justice and equality in that country. That is her wisdom and that is her experience. 
I am sorry I do not know where her composure comes from. But that, for me, is enough reason to cherish this evening that Dr. Rabele would generously share with us. The struggle for the civilization of South Africa is part of the life and triumphs of many of us gathered here tonight. The spirit that made South Africa a concern to most of us through all those years of anti apartheid campaigning is well documented by the work and legacy of the man whose memory this distinguished lecture series seeks to honor, Karl Schleffer. I never met him personally, and I'm sorry for that, but I know enough about the impact of his work to firmly believe that he was committed to a vision of solidarity and justice across borders and cultures. His commitment brought that part of Africa to Basel and to Switzerland and lives on in the splendid work that his family is doing through the Basel Africa Bibliography and the Karl Schleppmann Foundation. There's one other way to ensure that Karl Schleppmann's legacy lives on. We should not let South Africa fail because the values represented by the human struggle for justice and equality in that country are a matter of concern to all of us. And I hope you will appreciate the full force of this vow on my part, because I am from Mozambique. And um, it's like a Swiss wishing success to Germany. <laughs> but I really mean it. And I think a good starting point is to listen to those people who should know them. So Dr. Mandela Rampele does. So please let's talk.